from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to meet the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Navoitsky. We're hanging out on the island for week number two of Beat the Champ from here at Island Lanes on Grand Island. And all is right with the bowling world when our buddy Mike Zarcone is back on the show. He comes in on a two match winning streak looking to continue his outstanding run. Right. Well, you can only hold him back for so long. He had a rough start to the year, but now we're seeing the real Mike Zarcone. I think we're going to have a feature presentation here with him and Chuck Jagodzinski. That's going to be a tough match. Yeah, that's our first match. Is our Cohen versus Jagodzinski. We've got Mike Johnson. We've got Jeff Dio on the show as well, too. What is it about Mike that just makes him so tough? All the experience he has and all the accolades that he has, you know, this one was one that he really wanted to. So I think he's just got, you know, so many wins and so many things behind him that it just makes him um, confident. Yeah, well, Janelle, we'd have no real Grand Islanders on this week's show, but I'm sure the crowd's going to get behind some of the guys we've got here today. Like I said, if we're at Mullet's Island Lanes, you know it's going to be fun, it's going to be loud, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, and sometimes unpredictable. You never do know what <laughs> will happen here when the Mullet's family is running the show as they are for this month. So who knows what's going to happen? You got to stick around and find out. It's Zarcone and Jagosinski match number one. So let's get rolling. Okay, so I'm here with the winningest bowler in Beat the Champ history. Now we saw a lot of you, and uh, you had a little bit of a losing streak going into the season, but you keep coming back, and and and, and you finally got it. So what's with the perseverance, and how do you do it? Well, you always want to keep trying. You know, I enjoy this. It, it, it's fun, and uh, you know, we'll just move forward, and hopefully, we can keep winning. Is it because you have every other accolade in the city that you had to put this one in the list? Sure, why not? You know, add another one to the list. All right. Well, you know, I spoke to someone out there, and uh, we have a bit of a Mike Zarcone fan club from seeing you on TV so much. So, welcome to Stardom. Thank you. It's been fun. Well, we look forward to more because I know there's going to be more. Thank you. All right, Mike. I'm here on Beat the Champ with a now familiar face, Chuck Jagosinski, who, by the way, I really enjoy the commentary on my game on Wednesday nights to get me back for my commentary on your game. <laughs> but thank you. No problem. You give a little, I give a little. All right. Well, I like it. I like that you uh, come over and see my 8-pin and go, what? What's going on with that? So anyways, what's your approach to today here at Beat the Champ? Um, probably play outside. That's all the only thing I know to play outside here. So if I have a decent shot, I'll give Mike all he can handle. If I don't, he'll walk over me. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess it remains to be seen what happens, but I know you're going to give him a great match because I know what a great bowler you are. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Yep, thank you. Between these two titans of Buffalo bowling, this is the 32nd appearance on Beat the Champ with 26 combined wins. I don't know that it gets any better than these two guys on what we've seen on this show, Sue, to have Mike Zarcone and Chuck Jagosinski going at it each other with each other. We get it started with Mike Zarcone with a strike in the first frame. Those 17 wins now ahead of Jeremy Zimmerman for the most all time on Beat the Champ. And right, and you know, the wins and how many times you've been here and all that, um, you know, it's it's speculating, you know, it's like it sounds good that Jeremy has so many wins, but those what he came in a big chunk right, with the 12 match. What he accomplished streak. was amazing. Right. But what Mike accomplishes too is amazing. Making this show um, every single qualifier, I mean from all the people that qualify and then having to be in that yeah. top nine. Um, is also amazing. Yeah. So now, keep in mind, Jeremy Zimmerman had, four, had a 14 match winning streak, that and that uh, accounted for his <laughs> right. total number of wins, which came in at 15. So, so Mike Zarcone has done it, but so is Chuck Jagosinski. He comes in with a nine with nine wins, which is in the top 10 as well too. I mentioned this is his 12th show. Um, you know, like it, it's the old cliche. They're they're like the furniture. You show up at a bowling center, and Chuck and Mike are aren't here. Here, that's when you notice it. Well, we've got two guys here that that really, really want to win. I mean, every time you you oh, oh. oh look at the reaction from Mike Sarcone. And you know what? Whatever his reaction is, I would have the same. I mean, this. How did that happen? His ball was driving so hard. I mean, this is not a a, a normal leap for any right-hander. So. Um, this this comes from the ball just driving so hard, and it was truly a great shot. And 
you know, I was talking about both these guys' real determination to want to win, and that just is, um, that's just a bad break. All right, so Mike Sarko will have to shake that open frame off on the unusual leave and get himself back going in the right direction because he knows that Chuck Jagosinski will attempt to jump right through that opening. Well, the only consolation of leaving a 7-9 is knowing how good you threw it. And I don't know if that's a whole lot of consolation. His oh, balls... Not, that was, an, that was no, not, another not good throw. No, well, his, it's not, what's happening, he's getting a little... Lane's breaking down for him, and he's getting a little bit too sharp of a break in the back end, so he's going to have to... You know, throw it harder or move his feet in and catch a little bit more of the, the head oil in the front of the lane. All right, so um, he comes back with a spare in the third frame for Mike Zarcone. Now, we talked about Jeremy Zimmerman. It, that 14-match winning streak that Jeremy Zimmerman had, which holds as the longest winning streak on our show, ended by Chuck Jagosinski at the Rapids Bowling Center last month. And then he goes on after winning that match, and who does he lose to? Mike Sarkoon. <laughs> so it, 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 when these guys have been on the show as much as they have, they have matched up with each other head to head on a few occasions. And there you get an early look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard, manned as always by Janelle Saban. So these two guys are so good and they've been on the show so much, you know they're going to match up with each other. And you, know, you know what else is nice is it gives people at home a chance to, um, you know, pick a favorite, really get to know the players because. You see them bowl, some, you, you like their style, you don't like their style, or one's your favorite. But it's nice, I was talking to someone in, in the audience, and they're here to watch Mike Sarkone bowl because he's, he's great. become a favorite he's of theirs great. from watching the show, yeah. and, I, and I love that. Yeah, and, and you know, hey, we live in a world where stars drive everything, and, and in the world of Beat the Champ, Mike Sarkone's a star. Now, this feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Yeah, I, I mean, one thing that <coughs> I think that, and I, and I, I think I've almost seen Chuck working on a little bit is just having a bit of more of a sense of humor about this. And, and he um, takes it pretty seriously. He does, doesn't. he does. But you know, you've had some interviews with him where he's still been pretty um, heated from yeah, the match. Yeah, I thought he was know? gonna bite my head off. <laughs> and. He, he, when I when I interviewed him earlier today, he seemed to have a, a pretty good demeanor about the whole thing. He said, "If I have a great shot, I'm going to give him a run. If I don't, then he's going to win." So he was a little more philosophical today. You know, and, and I think what you know, and there's again a nine-pin lead for Mike Zarcone. It's been a it's been a weird start to this match for Mike. Well, strike open on this not on the seven nine split spare strike spare and now another nine pin well what we talked about when this week started when this month started i should say is the shot the transition of the shot and how um, it breaks down and doesn't necessarily because it's a house shot mean it's going to break down to be easier and easier and easier in this case the back ends are are pretty sparky and, they're, and by that it means they're, they're That's the greatest word ever. You just called something sparky. I did. I, I, I don't know what you I really did. mean by it, but it's a great <laughs> way to describe something. <laughs> if I was sitting right now with my uh, analyzing bowling and throwing, and I was bowling out there, that's how I turn around and say they're they're really spark sparking in the back. All right, that's awesome. I because, love it. Because you know the ball is just making a left hand turn in the back of the lane, and because of the way Mike throws it. You know he's getting an, an a magnified version of it, so his ball is really cutting through the pin. Where angle of entry for Chuck is more down and in, right to left. So he's not getting that over hook in the back, which is, um, you know, taking advantage of the lane situation and and how it benefits him. And okay, now that a was interesting. That's difficult lead for Mike, for Chuck. And Chuck had been so good to start things off. That ball just never got any real well, oomph on it. This is this is what happens as a bowler. So Chuck comes out there. He's got he's got four in a row, and he sees the lane um, in a certain way because everything's been 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 perfect. He gets up on lane ten, gets the ball in a little bit, and the ball doesn't hook up for him because there's a lot of oil on the inside of the lane. So now he has to think about it and doesn't want to miss in on the next time he's up on 10. So he gets it to the more to the right where all the dry is. So that's what happened there. So now he's going to have to figure that lane 10 out. Not that it's hard, he just uh, 
He got extremes of both things that could happen. All right, so he comes back with a strike in the eighth frame. Right. So now back to Mike Zarcon for the eighth frame, and he's got to find himself a little bit here. Yeah, you know, just not a lot of real force on the pin action there, and that leaves the seven pin for Mike. And it does look like lane number 10 is starting to emerge as the tricky one. Right, Sparky? Sparky. Sparking in the back. You know, you keep using that, it's gonna, that, that can dangerously become a nickname. <laughs> if you don't want it to, you might want to choose not to use that word very often. Well, that's, they got a spark in order to say it, and they're All sparking right. out there. Okay. So now a lot of times on wood lanes, the front of the lane will be what burns first, not the back of the lane. So what will happen is the ball will end up using some energy up early. Good shot there. Using its energy up early, and you won't see that big hook in the back end because the balls sort of run out of energy. But because these are newly resurfaced lanes, and you can see, if you can see, they look kind of glossy, which is unusual for wood. Um, they're holding up really well, and the back ends are still staying very clean. Big strike, sparky. ninth frame. Very sparky, thank you. <laughs> big strike in the ninth frame for Chuck Jagosinski. He's had a nice run here, nice score sheet. First four strikes, spare in the fifth, strike in the sixth, open in the seventh, strikes in the eighth and the ninth. And you can see that this is a match still tight, but maybe Chuck's starting to take control. And boy, another one like that in the tenth. Uh, not only gives him control, is going to give him the win. So taking advantage of a couple of those odd throws by Mike Zarcona early on in the in the match as opening the door for Chuck Zagazinski to go get himself a victory. Right. This has really been a case of um, how the lanes have broken down and really how the two of their games differ. And it was just easier. I shouldn't say easier, but it was just more advantageous for Chuck's game in this case than it was for Mike's. Yeah, so, and, and boy, what a strong way to finish for Chuck Jagosinski with one more to go. He has ended with four consecutive strikes and a fifth one here to post up the final score. Yeah, he won't get the strike, but he will still get a very impressive 246 score on the board, and it's gonna get Chuck a win and a little bit of revenge from losing to Mike Zarcone last month at the Rapids Bowling Center. I think he was Center. just taunting me, but I... He was taunting me? <laughs> Chuck was taunting me? I think he was taunting me, actually. He was, well, either you can't taunt, if you can taunt me, but don't taunt Sue, Chuck. That's not cool. That's not, she's a Hall of Famer. Don't taunt the Hall of Famer. <laughs> Well, that's true. No, Chuck points out he beat a Hall of Famer, and that is very correct. One more here for Mike Zarcone. Two more for Mike. Finish it out. Now, you know, I th the point I was going to make earlier is wow. uh, even though these guys don't bowl against each other a lot on this show, they bowl against each other all the time throughout West Virginia. Right. Premier Leagues are the Premier Leagues, and that's where everybody shows up. Yeah. So Mike Zarcone finishes it out and posts up a 193. So it's a big win for Chuck Jagosinski. He will move on. We will talk to Mike and find out a little bit what happened early on in this match to put him behind. And then a very happy Chuck Jagosinski will roll on to match number two. So Sue and I will return to Island Lanes on Grand Island. It's week number two of Beat the Champ here on the island. Much more to come right after this. Well, Mike Zarcone, you're still trying to figure out where that 7-9 split came from in the second frame. I absolutely am. I, it was unbelievable. You, you've seen and done an awful lot of bowling. For you to say something comes up like that that you don't ever I, remember I don't, seeing. Yeah, I don't think I've ever done that before, so it was a first. Right. What are you doing to the lanes here, Maul, which <laughs> to mess with this guy? Well, when you throw it that good, things like that are going to happen. Stop throwing it so good, all right? <laughs> <laughs> How much do you enjoy bowling up against a guy like Chuck? I mean, you guys know each other oh, for a yeah. long time. You bowl against each other all the time. You can tell, even those of us can tell, there's a real mutual respect factor. Oh, yeah, we have fun. We, we enjoy bowling each other. It's a, it's a good time. 
All right, well, it's uh, not often that uh, Mike is sitting here talking to me after a disappointing loss, but that means Chuck Jagosinski's got a chance to put a little streak together. We'll see if it happens when we return to Island Lanes. Beat the Champ continues right after this. Hi, I'm on Beat the Champ with Mike Johnson. Last time I saw you, you were shooting 800 at me uh, <laughs> in league. So uh, how have you been, and uh, how'd you get here? Uh, I've been good. Our uh, game's been good. I have been. I did get a 300 the last game in qualifying to, to sneak in, so I'm ready to take advantage of it, have some fun. All right, so uh, good luck today. And uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, how, what brought you to be the champ? Well, it's it's the hot thing right now, in my opinion. You know, everybody's asking, "Hey, when are you gonna get on the show?" So, gotta get out and try out and qualify, and here we are. You hear that? Get out here and qualify, because this is what happens. You get to get on the show and you get to be interviewed here by me. So, good luck today, and I hope to see great things. All right, thank you. Match number two in the challenger for Chuck Jagosinski is that gentleman, Mike Johnson, making his second show appearance here on Beat the Champ. Overall record of one win and one loss. Last time we saw Mike and the only other time we seen him was at Manor Lanes back in 2016. And here we go, Johnson versus Jagosinski. And not the start that Mike Johnson wanted. For a little insider knowledge here on Mike Johnson, we welcome in the proprietor here of Malwitz's Island Lanes, Mike Malwitz, as guest color commentator here for this one. And tell us a little bit about Mike Johnson, Mike. Uh, he's another longtime Island Lanes bowler, been bowling here since he was a kid. Um, probably one of our top bowlers, if not the top bowler. Uh, just shy of me you know just kidding mike johnson <laughs> no he's a, he's a super solid bowler uh bowls good in tournaments bowls good in league he's uh he's pretty good well and i guess if you're going to split the first frame is the frame to do it in. yeah right. not yeah so not the start he wanted so it's an eight pin open frame and chuck jagosinski powering the ball down the lanes leaves the 10 pin maybe mike johnson can uh represent island lanes you know a little more we're zero and two in match play uh this month, so. Yeah, you have a couple of your guys early on our last week's show, so. I know uh, some of your league boys, or all of your league boys, you had a competition for the fourth show. Yes. And uh, I heard the score was pretty big to get to make that cut. Yeah, uh, that cut was 680 80, something, yeah. And uh, is Mike in that, in, in that? Mike's in that, yeah. So we want to give these guys too much time to have between this competition and that competition. We want to keep them out on the lanes, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, we uh, held the qualifier during league bowling. Uh, we took the top 20 bowlers, and uh, four of them were guaranteed females. And the top four scores were captains, and we held a live draft uh, uh, last week, last Friday night after bowling. And um, so it's going to be five-man teams, four five-man teams, Baker matches, Baker right. style. Right. We did the same thing last year, and right. it went we'll pretty well. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that'll be Baker. two weeks from today, weeks from today. Um, for our uh, for our exhibition match here at Island Lanes. You got a good look at Chuck Jagosinski grabbing the strike there in the second frame, and then Mike Johnson comes back and does the very same thing. So good uh, response back from the open in the first, and here's Mike Johnson frame number three. And another strike for Mike. I want to remind you that the top qualifier in our round of 24 each month on Beat the Champ wins a television valued at $500 from Dirt Cheap TV. Qualifying is already locked in and set for next month's series of shows at Mancuso's Batavia Lanes. We're excited to head out into Genesee County for that one. And then we'll have the schedule for you for the start of the 2018 Beat the Champ season coming up pretty soon. I still have my TV from when I was high qualifier and beat the champ, and it's in my living room right now. So I, I'd like to personally thank Dirt Cheap TV for that. There you go. See, a satisfied customer. <laughs> Absolutely. You so, know, I think it's important to point out, though, you can also win the TV and not necessarily make the show. Make the so show. there's different ways to... Um, 
to, to make money. And we don't really talk about prize money too much, but not only is there's prize money for the qualifiers, there's the TV, and of course there's making the TV show and um, accumulating prize money as you go. So this can be a, this is not only a good showcase for your bowling, but you can know, make a little cash on the side. Yeah, I mean, the payout for this tournament is incredible. For a $30 entry, I mean, look at Jeremy Zimmerman, you know, when he made his run, he walked away with over $1,400, that's, that's huge. Right. So there's there's no reason not to chuck down 30 bucks and take your chances. Right. Great Plus start. you get to be on TV, you get to hang out with us a little bit, you know, and you get to be the, the toast of Western is definitely, New York bowlers. Definitely the, the most important reason to bowl be the champ, but you know, the prize money doesn't hurt. <laughs> Three strikes in a row for Mike Johnson, trying to maybe take advantage of that little door opener. Chuck Jagosinski left with the open frame in the third, so after the open in the first for Mike, he has found his groove here as he shifts over to lane number nine. Like I said, Mike's really solid, and uh, I wouldn't expect anything less. He's really got a killer instinct uh, when somebody leaves, leaves an opening for him. Nice smooth stroke, nice. and the results are there. Four in a row for Mike Johnson. House Shoes. A little thing about House Shoes. Uh, Mike, Mike acquired the name House Shoes Johnson this summer, bowling in the, the summer sweeper. He forgot his bowling shoes. So who goes bowling and forgets their <laughs> bowling shoes, right? So he rented a pair of, of alley shoes, bowled in them, made the cut, and made a good run in match play and, and made money that night. So ever, all, all of his friends have been calling him House Shoes Johnson since. So that's all you and the guys needed to pin a new nickname oh, yeah. on him, right? He's House Shoes Johnson House for life. House Shoes Johnson. And that's a spare for Jagosinski in the fifth frame. Chuck seems to be searching a little bit here. We've well, seen that from... Uh, the, you know, the, the last few bowlers, um, they can they can put a run together and, and really shoot good games, and then all of a sudden the lanes adjust a little bit and they start leaving those ten pins. They go yeah. high like Chuck just did, and then um, leaves the nine. So it is tough to keep up with the moves. Um, yeah, Chuck's, Chuck's a little bit. He's playing in the dirt. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's definitely in the dirt. Playing in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me with this Party stuff Mike this and week. I, well, we have a bowling lingo conversation over here. <laughs> Paul, Paul getting, it's a real thing. I'm just getting used to trying to figure out what you meant by sparky. <laughs> now you're telling me about playing in the dirt. I, I said the back ends were sparky, and he, now he's playing in the dirt. <laughs> playing in the dirt is an actual bowling term. It's when you're really far outside um, toward those dryer boards, and yeah. Chuck is laying it down right on the dry, mm -hmm. and we refer to that as playing in the dirt. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Another strike for House Shoes Johnson. That's five in a row. <laughs> We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. So now, now between him and Greg Vojtovich, we've got a whole shoes theme going on here. <laughs> His house shoes were in way better shape than Greg yes. Vojtovich's Oh, I'm shoes. sure they were. If they weren't 30 years old, then they were in better shape. I think that's why we haven't seen Greg. Because those shoes probably Maybe finally the shoes wore out. Apart and he, he, he can't ran, bowl without his lucky he shoes. He ran out of duct tape to put them back together again. Seventh frame for Mike Johnson. Oh, oh, how about that? Wow. All wow. right. All right. Is there wow. a little guy back there, there knocking those there, kids There out? might be a little home court love there. Oh, but if there was ever <laughs> definition of home lane advantage it's that <laughs> shot right there what's 710 <laughs> I don't know I didn't see anything and a good answer from Chuck Jagosinski that was a pretty amazing shot there Chuck used to bowl league here for a, a few years in a row um, a couple years back so he he has a good understanding of what goes on here so it's it's not like he doesn't know the lanes but he doesn't get the little guy in the back knocking those pins down. He doesn't because get the little guy in the back. Bully here. Yeah. He currently doesn't bowl here, so <laughs> we, we we don't give him the love taps. <laughs> so Chuck with two strikes in a row, and Mike working on his streak of six in a row right now. Funny story about Mike. So in the roll off a uh, week and a half ago, he came in into the bar and told me, Mike, I need the next 16 to make the, the show. He struck out for 180 and then shot 300 the last game. Wow. So he, he, he had the last 16 to make to make TV. Well, clutch, right? He's, That's he's clutch. Good, yeah, he's that good was, at math. <laughs> yeah. That, that was clutch. Seven strikes in a row for Mike Johnson as he moves to the ninth frame, starting to put himself in control of this match.
you can tell the crowd here is cheering on their hometown guy. That was a really good shot. He posted that one. Eight in a row for Mike Johnson. That is going to be enough to come up with the win, but we're going to see how he finishes up here and see how strong he finishes up. Remember, you said it, Mike. He had an open frame in the first, and your quote was, if you're going to have an open frame, the first is the place to, the do to do it. He is in position now to continue to sweep the table off with strikes the rest of the way. Oh, that's a good shot. Yeah, usually that angle carries here all the time. If you can play that far out and, and uh, have that angle, that 10-pin falls. But Chuck just seemed to have that trouble this, this match. Well, interesting about the variation style is um, Mike's playing the shim. You know, he's in there. He's only around second arrow. Right. So he's not like Zarcone was. Mike Zarcone was well around between third and fourth arrow where he was playing. And so he's he's playing the shim, and Chuck is to the right of that, which, which is not what people normally are. Normally yeah. you're looking for that line between the dry boards and the, oil, and the oily boards. Chuck is way to the right. Like, there is dry to the left of Chuck, which is not normally what you would want. Right. Yeah. I mean, what that can lead to is you might leave 10 pins because your ball might not save enough energy right. to, to uh, transition at the right point down the lane. And that could be why, why Chuck's leaving those 10 pins. Final throw for Chuck Jagosinski is a strike. And he will post up a 195 final score, but it won't be enough. So let's see what Mike Johnson can do here, running a stretch of eight consecutive strikes. Let's see if he can't finish off with three more. And it won't happen. It won't matter, but it doesn't happen. And an impressive win for Mike Johnson here as he beats Chuck Jagosinski and moves on to our next and final match of week two here at Grand Islands, Grand Island, Grand Islands, Island Lanes. <laughs> like I said, uh, you know, me and Mike, Mike have been bowling matches together for years, pot games and everything like that. And uh, you leave him an opening and he's going to take advantage of it, so. He's super solid. And uh, and how easy is it to shake off that open frame in the first like that? I mean, you bowl with Mike enough to know that that didn't phase him? Not at all. Not at all. He went up in the second frame, just bared down, had to throw a good shot, and, and he did. It's I a 257 no final score for Mike Johnson. An impressive performance for him, including that run of strikes. When we come back, we'll talk to Chuck Jagosinski about the way this match went for him and get you ready for our third match, which will be Mike Johnson versus Jeff Dio. We're having fun here on Grand Island. Beat the Champ returns right after this. Well, Chuck, I know you were able to get the win over Mike Zarcon in the previous match, and you guys are so competitive with each other. How good does that feel? Oh, that felt great because when he beat me at Rapids, even though I didn't have a good shot there, I didn't want to lose, of course. Of course <laughs> not, of course. Uh, and then you kind of ran into a buzzsaw with the way Mike Johnson was yeah, going. Yeah, I just couldn't carry it. I had five 10 pins, a light seven pin. I don't know what happened. I, I moved right on 10 and still left the 10 pin, so I didn't know where I was to go, right? unless I walked down lane 11 to bowl on 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, any complaints about the lane conditions, you can take them up with Mike. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he will. <laughs> Mike, make him feel a little better. All right, here's your consolation prize. Great bowling, Chuck. Thank you. All right, Chuck Jagosinski, always one of our favorites and one of the best beat the champ bowlers. Mike Johnson's the guy who's hot right now. We'll see if he can keep that streak alive when we return to Grand Island right here on Beat the Champ. Hi, I'm here on Beat the Champ with Jeff Dio, a face we've seen from time to time, but I know you like this place, you're familiar with this place, and uh, what nights do you bowl here? Uh, I bowl here Monday nights in the league, and been bowling in that league for about six years now, so I like bowling here. So would we consider you one of uh, Mallet's boys that he's been so protective of all day? I guess, I don't know. I like bowling against Mike. I usually beat him, so it's always fun. So you know that he's gonna come and uh, be the guest commentator and uh, talk about you, right? Oh, I'm sure I'll have some interesting things to say. So. 
All right, well, you give him something to talk about out there, okay? All right, All see right. what I can do. All right, but well. All right, thank you. It's an Island Lane showdown for match number three. Mike Johnson against Jeff Dio, two guys that bowl here regularly. So there's a lot on the line in this one, Mike Mall. It's a lot of bragging rights and more than a few beverages at the bar here at Island Lanes may be determined by what happens in this match. Oh, yeah, they, they both bowl in the same league on Monday nights here. And, uh, well, they, they did. <laughs> <laughs> now only one of them will bowl in the league. Um, they they both bowl pot games together, uh, yeah. And Mike Johnson was a captain in two weeks on our fourth Baker match show, and he drafted Jeff Dio to his team. So that should show you what Mike Johnson thinks about Jeff Dio. Well, uh, that means he must have the goods. He must have the good scouting report then. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Dio was Mike Johnson's first pick. Oh, how about that? So. So now Jeff Dio is going to have some negotiating uh, ability here, depending on how this match goes. So it's an opening spare for Mike Johnson. And now we get our first look at Jeff Dio, who is a familiar name here on Beat the Champ. He's making his fourth show appearance, an overall record, three wins and three losses. Last time we saw him, he was one of those 14 straight victims of Jeremy Zimmerman during the streak a couple months ago at Classic Rangers. And a nice little synchronized fall there on the strike in the first frame for Jeff Dio. Tell us about Jeff's bowling style, Mike. Jeff's bowling style, well, he, he actually bowls like, uh, you know, as far as uh, the, the spot on the lane he plays, like a lot of us here. Um, you know, straight tweener, kind of, you know, get as far right, close to the dirt, not as in, in, in the dirt as Chuck <laughs> Jagosinski, but. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he uh, and he went to. Uh, I know he went to Bowl U over the summer, Ran Angelos uh, thing. So he's really gotten a lot better. He puts a lot of work in it, kind of like Mike Brycom. Um, you know, he practices a lot. He bowls a lot. So he's he's solid. So this should be an excellent match between these two guys, as Mike already said, very familiar with each other. You got Mike Johnson, who had that incredible momentum boost, Sue, of the way that he bowled against Chuck Jagosinski in our last match. Right, and I, I would expect um, it to be the same. He bowled against me in league. He came in as a sub on the team, that the opposing team, and proceeded to shoot 800 at me. I didn't even care. I was like, thanks. But then afterwards, I, um, I, my teammate and I actually came in and sat with him at the bar, and we actually bought him a beer. He bowled so great, and uh, talked to him a little bit, and he's a really nice guy. Oh, he's a super nice guy, man. 45 years old from right here in Grand Island is Mike Johnson. Oh. Just Man, he's 45? Ah, wow. That's what it says. Wow, he's old. There, there is life after 45, Mike. <laughs> yes, that is true. Yeah, but you don't look at it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Neither does he. <laughs> that's why I was shocked. Spare in the third frame for Mike Johnson. And now we turn it back to Jeff Dio for his third frame. Opens with a pair of strikes for Jeff. 32 years old, as you as you saw. I don't know who to root for. You can't root. You don't there root for either one of them. Because <laughs> if you root for either one of them, you're going to make the other one very angry at you. You're a proprietor. You have to be, you have to be Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> You're rooting for a one-pin match that comes down to the last ball. Right. That's what you're rooting for. Three the straight little, the strikes. The little man in the back doesn't know who to root for. He's, he's, he's well, you just better, knock them all down. You better, get on the, you better get on the phone and let the little guy in the back know who he's got to take care of. Uh, Dio's, been, Dio's been bowling here for uh, quite a few years now, and, and we've become friends. We you know, bowl together and stuff, so he's another great dude. He stands real far up on the approach. He does. That is four in a row for Jeff Dio. Yeah. Oh, now Dio's getting some love from the home crowd. <laughs> oh, smile on the face as well. How quickly they changed. <laughs> <laughs> 
and this is fun to see. Fun to see guys that have a lot of respect for each other, uh, that have that enjoy bowling against each other because they bowl so much together. Uh, they know each other's games, but they genuinely like each other, and that's pretty. And I think that's generally the case on every match we see here on this show because you're such a part of a tight knit bowling community here in Western New York. Yeah, there aren't many bowlers in this area that don't know each other. They haven't, you know, come across cross pairs with each other. And everybody is, you know, it's one big family. All right, let's just talk a little bit. Mention, um, I said that Jeff stands real close on the approach. Like he's um, actually a foot ahead of the, the dots. And look where Mike stands. Right. Yeah. Johnson and, really stands way back on the approach. Right. He is, and he gains a lot of momentum from that. So just to talk a little bit about what the, what that creates is that if you stand further back on the, the approach and get that foot speed. That's where you can generate uh, more ball speed, a little bit more power um, with your legs because power is generated in this sport with your legs. You would think it would be with your swing, but it's not. It's with your legs. Yeah, too many people think that it, it's in the arm swing and they try to power their arm swing through, but it, everything comes from your legs. If you can be strong with your legs, that's where all the power in the world comes from. Fifth frame spare for Mike Johnson. I want to remind you at the end of the show, the end of this match, we will have the Ortner overhead door word of the week. Take that word and enter to win an Ortner garage door opener. Details available at WBBZ.TV. Fifth frame now for Jeff Dio. And that's the end of the strike run as the seven pin holds up. That is a very short approach. It, it is very short. I mean, he, he still generates a, right. enough ball speed with that. Because um, you can still do it with your legs. You're, you know, he has to be firm at the line. But, um, geez, that almost looks like a three-step. It's not, but his steps are so short. His, his first step is really short, and then his last three is boom, boom, boom. And that's where he can, he's still able to finish strong and, you know, generate the ball speed that he needs. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Sixth frame now, how does Johnson respond? I, it might be going back a little bit too far for you, but back in, there was a lefty on the Pro Bowlers Tour whose elbow came out. He had a bent elbow. Do you remember him at all? Lichstein? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't Lichstein. No? I know what you're talking about, but anyway. So this is the curse of being a little younger, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always like, oh, you don't, you don't remember that. Um, but yeah, so th whatever style you have, if you perfect it and you do it the same every time in bowling, then then you're fine. You know, go with it. So when you're a kid and you start that close to the to the foul line, if you can just if you can do it every time, rock and roll. So Mike Johnson responded with a strike in the sixth, and a strike in the seventh. That's that's the one House Shoes Johnson really wanted. He bared down. He threw it really good. Got a good roll on it. Knew it off his hand. I think uh, if Mike is able to continue bowling well and comes back on next week's show, you got to get him a shirt that says House Shoes Johnson on the oh, back. Oh, he definitely needs a House Shoes Johnson shirt. So now the pressure is right back on Jeff Dio after the open frame in the sixth, and he watches Mike Johnson put two strikes on the board after that. And there's a heck of a response. This is setting up to be a great finish between these two friends. Well, like you said, Mike responds, and, and he did. A lot on the line in this one. If, Not I, all... if I were a betting man, I would have bet on that sixth and seventh frame from Johnson. Because this is now a seven-pin match, right? Yep. So as we said, a lot of bragging rights, a lot of long-term uh, chatter that's on the line in this match. I can't wait till Monday. Uh, along with being able to advance to next week's Great show. Shot. What a great response by Jeff Dio to come out right. and hit two strikes after that open frame. And there's the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Deep Ram scoreboard that shows you just how tight this one is. No matter what Mike does, he can't shut him up. I can't wait for the end of this match. I'm giddy. <laughs> Eighth frame now for Mike Johnson. Fist pump. Yeah. Oh. Johnson oh. 
I'm getting a little into it there. That was the little man in the back. He pushed that four pin forward. Well, I, I'm kind of known around around here for tripping fours. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm going to take credit for that trip four right there. And it sure seems like some of the home lane knowledge is coming into play here, particularly as it relates to Mike Johnson. Kind of knows his way around these lanes, doesn't he? It. That pin went flying that was a great and shot. did about a 360 a around the 10. That was a great right shot. Around. See, there's a weak 10 and a wrap 10, ring 10. Gotcha. Um, that was a smash ring or wrap 10. That's where the six just goes around the 10 real quick. When you leave a weak 10, the six kind of falls in the flat gutter and just sits there. But that was a good shot. So a weak 10, you would it would warrant maybe a move or a switch. You know, we talked about when do you change what you're doing based on corner pins. Right. A week 10, you would make some type of change. A ring 10, you can't change Ring 10. Anything. So you that's an have. indicator. A week 10 is, uh, is an indicator of something that you should respond to. Yeah. Correct. But when you when you crush the pocket like that and just wrap a 10 around the 10, or a 6 around the 10, you, you just kind of suck it up. Just bad know. luck. Yep. Just bad luck. All right, so Jeff Dio's got two strikes in a row as he comes to the ninth frame. Big wow, strike, spots. three in a row. Great shot by Jeff Dealer. So now he'll have to finish strong here as the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard tells the story. Tenth frame. Same thing, again, wrapped right. right around the 10 pin. Yep. It did look like that. He, he leaked that ball a little inside, so it rode a coil a little longer, which can cause that 10 pin to stand up. Okay, so this is what, what we have here. If Jeff makes the spare, he wins. If he does not, if he misses the spare, he Mike can come up, he leaves the door open, but Mike would still have to double and get good count. So, wouldn't be a guarantee, but if he makes the spare, then he has Mike shut out. Oh, no. And look what happens. Look what happens. As you said it, Sue, all he needed was the spare. He doesn't get it. I feel, wow. like, I feel like Nelson Burton Jr. He was Mike, known for doing that. <laughs> wow. This is just an amazing sport sometimes when things happen that you don't think are going to. So say it Robert again Del for Ballard us. Ballard when he guttered. Sue, say it again for us. What does Mike need now? Double. Double in a little bit of count. Okay. So now Mike Johnson knows what's in front of him. Double and six. There's wow. one. That was a rocket. There's only so many times you can dangle the carrot in front of Mike Johnson. <laughs> So you need another here, and then just good solid count, which seems pretty likely to happen. So this ball right here probably decides this match. Can Mike Johnson make it two in a row and advance to next week's show? Amazing. The little man just no, he's not the little man. He <laughs> swatted that pin. The little man in the back. <laughs> oh, we're having fun here today. Okay, so we need six. He needs six pins. Six job is not done. If he doesn't get six, I'm gonna punch him in the face. Oh no. <laughs> And an amazing comeback is complete for Mike Johnson, who got the opportunity to come from behind and wins 229 to 224. That was one of the best matches we've seen in a long time. That, I knew it was going to be an exciting finish, and it didn't disappoint.
Right, so a tough one for Jeff Dio, uh, who had the chance to put it away and miss the single pin spare. We'll talk to Jeff about that. We'll get to Mike's reaction to an amazing comeback, and we'll get you ready for next week's show when Sue and I return to Malwitz's Island Lanes here on Grand Island. It's been another great edition of Beat the Champ. A terrific match to wrap up week two here on Grand Island. Jeff, what happened on that spare in the 10th frame? Spare in the 10th, ball fell right off my hand and had no chance. Just the worst possible thing to happen at the worst time. Yeah, yeah. And now you got to live with it with your buddy Mike. I know. He'll never let you forget it. Yeah, my captain for the team event. <laughs> Got a bowl with him. Later, right. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Sue, he's not going to let Jeff forget that. We're not that. talking about that trade he's got going on the yeah. side right now. <laughs> trade. trade maybe somebody that can make a 10 pin. <laughs> not Brandon. Mike, our guest commentator over here said that you will rise to the opportunity when given a challenge. Is that is that pretty common? Uh, it's becoming more common as I get older, but I uh, appreciate that, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, it was one of those situations where the window opened. You, you almost don't expect it, but you just you got nothing to lose, and you go for it and swing away. And just so you know, the little man is in the back knocking down those pins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, good luck going forward. Someone's got to figure you. out uh, who can slide the little man a little bit of that prize money <laughs> to make sure he's in position to do it the right time. Mike Malwitz, uh, give these guys a little bit of prize money and congratulate them on another. Years, right. You're still going. This is, right. this yeah. is Dio's. Jeff gets it. That's right, because Mike's right. got more bowling to do. He's coming back for next week show Sue and I will preview that when we return right after this. Good matches, great battles, good rivalries, friends going against each other. This has been a lot of fun for the first two weeks. Oh my god, it's been a riot. But uh, last man standing for Island Lanes is Mike Johnson. So you know, that's going to be the hometown favorite this this next next day. Yeah, because Mike's going to come back and try to keep his winning streak going on next week's show. That may have the energy in this place, Janelle, <laughs> through the roof. What great energy we have here. It's just, it's loud, it's exciting, it's fun, and that's just even more reason for everyone to come be a part of this show. Yeah, we're having a grand time on Grand Island, and make sure you stick around for next week's show. It may very well continue. For Sue and for Janelle and the rest of the gang here at WB, Thanks for watching Beat the Champ.